Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we've got a Punch Fun Known video and this is The 12 Worst Number 30 Entrance in WWE Royal Rumble History And we'll get right into letters Let me know what you think the worst number 30 entrance is in Royal Rumble History Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button, hit subscribe button, comment your thing down below, let's go for 20 long years, not a single competitor was able to win the Royal Rumble from the coveted number 30 spot, which probably means a lot of those number 30 entrants sucked. And well, you can read the title of this video, unless you can't. In which case, shame on your school system. But while the first two decades were not terribly kind to the Rumble's would-be final boss, the following two decades have been a mixed bag as well. You got your 2008 John Cena to set the benchmark, but otherwise, WWE has gotten a lot wrong with what should be the most anticipated moment of the Rumble in modern times. There are gonna be a wide range of entrants for loads of reasons, but let's get into it and see who did the number 30 dirty. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 12 worst number 30 entrants in Royal Rumble history. But before before we get on with this list, please make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it, and make sure you check out the latest edition of Survival Series, where our contestants try and name every single Royal Rumble entrant, and I mean every Royal Rumble entrant. Honorable mentions Wade Barrett 2011 and Tyler Breeze Greatest Royal Rumble. These aren't fair. I feel like that's why the honorable mentions, because they can't really count since they're part of a larger than 30 Royal Rumble match. Gotta be mentioned, because my lord, neither did much of anything, but with an extra 10 or 20 people still waiting to enter these specific rumbles, maybe it's just best they kept the show rolling. Number 12, Randy Savage, 1993. I don't know if he's the worst, he's the stupidest. I think he's the stupidest, because he's the one that tries to, you know, pin Yokozuna. Like any like you normal do in Royal Rumbles is you try to pin people. What were they thinking? What were you thinking? Why would you do that? Why would Randy? Why would you book Randy Savage? Randy Savage, Macho Man Randy Savage, oh yeah. Why would you make him look like the stupidest human being on the planet? Who pins someone in a Royal? Who hit? You know, you hit the elbow and drop that fine. Why would you go for the pin? What a stupid ass thing is wrong with you looking like a, an idiot. That is the macho man deserves way more respect. No one left the fucking company. Y'all did him dirty. I remember a kid in middle school once told me about a guy who lost the Royal Rumble match because he tried to pin someone before getting yeeted straight over the top and I thought there was no way anyone could be so stupid. Then I found out that it not only happened, but the perpetrator was none other than Macho Man Randy Savage and I was and remain so f***ing sad about it. Could you have made one of your bigger stars to look like a bigger dumbass? As an I didn't think it was possible. Look, this is the stupidest. Randy Savage looks like the stupidest human being as a result of this. He's the stupidest f human being. Trent Savage was an excellent choice for number 30, and really should have won this match if we're being honest about it. But being one half of the dumbest ending to a Royal Rumble match in history is just too much to be redeemed. This just goes to show you are not about to hear a list of job guys who happen to pick a lucky number. Number 11, The Warlord, 1992. Everyone remembers the. I'm gonna be honest. I. Don't know if I've watched this Rumble again at full, but I might be one I need to review at some point. Warlord is the Royal Rumble punchline. Insert Tempest's impression of Luke's impression of the By the Numbers video here. But what people likely forget is the Warlord's role in closing out the legendary 1992 Royal Rumble. This one isn't as egregious as others on this list, because when 60% of the Rumble is made up of future WWE Hall of Famers, you don't have much right to complain that number 30 is only the Warlord. He lasted just 103 seconds, so definitely not a performance that would earn him a spot on a positive list, the numbers don't lie after all, but this match is just too good for this inoffensive number 30 to crack the top 10. Number 10, Tugboat, 1991. The first- I've definitely not seen this one few years of the Royal Rumble were mostly WWE trying to work out exactly what they had. As a result, some of the matches have storylines playing out, some of the matches have laid out spots, some of the matches had exciting final entrants, but for the most part, it would take some time for WWE to figure out that the man dressed up as the 1920s tugboat might not be the best choice to leave a lasting impression on their most exciting match of the year. He's in the match for all of 152 seconds and gets dumped by Hogan, but I gotta say, watching this again has lit a hate fire within me 
towards Tugboat, and I really wasn't expecting this. Got nothing against Fred Ottman. Typhoon is cool. Shockmaster wasn't even his fault. But why would- Shockmaster is fantastic. I don't want to hear anything. Shockmaster's entrance is the best debut in wrestling history. You can't convince me otherwise. Where else are you going to find a man who falls through a wall as his debut? He's remembered for all of history. I think that's in me on honest, in all honesty, I think that proves success. It was the most iconic debut in history. I think it's I think that equals success in my opinion. This is my opinion. Was there a wrestler called F Tug Boat going and why was he the final entrant in a Royal Rumble? Number nine, Booker T, two thousand two. Now let us fast forward. I don't know why, right? Because there's a lot of people who somehow think this is a good rumble. There's some people who think it isn't. The only reason I don't like the 2002 rumble is let we can say whatever you want. You can try to pretend like it, but let's be honest. There's only one winner that was happened, and it's built up that you know who the winner is. There was not a human being who was completely in shock that Triple H won the 2002 Royal Rumble. It was, it was, it was. Beaten India, beaten brutally every single time until he, until the rumble happened. That it was it was Triple H's to win, and it made sure you knew. Forward in time to when WWE absolutely knew what they were doing and still managed to give us a horrible final rumble entry. No more leniency, WWE, because I would love someone to explain to me how five-time WCW champion Booker T would be made to look like anything but the biggest goober in the business by entering at number 30, doing a spin a rooney and getting stunnered over the top rope in 35 seconds. This has nothing to do with Booker T. This was just WWE getting their jollies from burying the WCW guy, which is gross, but also stupid because- Yeah, because at this point he was Vince's guy, right? That was the thing, he was Vince's guy and he was being tormented by Stone Cold, so in their mind it's ha ha, this is funny, Stone Cold gets one up on Booker T by stunning him out of the ring and Booker only lasts three seconds, but it made Booker look fucking pathetic. What were you thinking? Because I don't know if anybody ever told Vince McMahon this, but the WCW guys that signed with WWE signed with WWE! Use them! Brainless old codger. Number eight, Dolph Ziggler, 28. <laughs> this one was so stupid. Why did you make Ziggler do this? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, Dolph returned from such a, only a few week absence. I don't know why people act like Dolph is gone for a good period of time. He's gone for like three weeks, I think. Three week absence. He makes his big return in the third rumble. I think he's in there for about a minute and then he's eliminated. The fuck was your thinking with this? This was the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Teen Men's. The first surprise entrant on this list, and proof that just because the final entrant of the Royal Rumble is a surprise, doesn't mean it's good. The story of the end of Dolph Ziggler's 2017 is so f***ing bizarre, resulting in this equally bizarre final entry of maybe the best Royal Rumble ever. So after some assorted losing, Ziggly Stardust went to the Charlie Haas School of Flattery and began imitating members of the WWE roster, then randomly won the US title at Clash of Champions, immediately said, nah, I don't want this, and disappeared from TV. Then, a month later, he returned as the final entrant in the 2018 Royal Rumble and was eliminated in two minutes. It's just a microcosm of what Ziggler spent a decade doing in WWE, going in circles with baffling creative choices that ultimately left him right back where he was. I mean, if he really wanted to be cheeky, he could have come out to Daniel Bryan's music before his record scratch, but given that this Rumble was in Philadelphia, same venue as the dreaded 2015 Rumble, maybe kicking the Daniel Bryan hornet's nest wouldn't have been the right call. Good Number girl. seven, Carmella, 29. I have no memory of Carmella being number 30 in the whip this one. No, no memory at all of that happening. Not saying it did happen. I have no f memory of it though. 19 women's. As we dive deeper into the depths of Dirty 30s, we are going to really start getting to the heart of how to f this up. Let me tell you right now. Oh, this one's because our Truth and Carmella, never mind. This one's because our Truth and Carmella won the uh, Mix Max Challenge. Because they won the Mixed Mass Challenge, they got to be uh, number 30, and our truth they got beat up and taken out by uh, Nia Jax. Alright, I remember now. It took a few seconds, but I figured I remembered why this happened. 
Yeah, it's fucking Telling us who number 30 is ahead of time is a damn fine way to make it happen. The final entrant of a Royal Rumble match is what the previous 29 had been building to, and people just want to feel excitement when it happens. Knowing is 100% of the battle when it comes to the excitement in the Royal Rumble, and while Carmella's run in the match was perfectly fine, one elimination in seven minutes, this secret <coughs> is undoubtedly one that is much better kept. Number six, Nia Jax, 2020. This one broke me. I was so mad, yet so I was laughing so hard. I was so mad because I don't like Nia Jax. She's done fine in her run. I'll give her that. She's done fine in the run. Um, done fine whatever one she's been doing, you know, on uh, in, on Raw. But, but, how do you fuck this up? And what I mean is she, her music played early and she came out early. How do you fuck this up? This is so easy to f not fuck up. How do you fuck this up? What went wrong? This is one I need to know what went wrong here. Because it's so easy. You play the, you countdown, play the music, then Naya comes out. Somehow, they forgot the countdown, then played the music, then Naya came out, and then they had the countdown pier, and then removed... What the fuck will we do? How do you fuck this up? I just need to know how you fuck this up. In 2023, Nia Jax made history by becoming the first person to ever return to wrestling after saying they were done forever, and she did this in the Royal Rumble match. Oh, I'm sorry, did I start too early? I have no idea how that happened. We've literally done this hundreds of times. As a run in a rumble, this wasn't very good, getting eliminated by the opposition in two minutes. But you do get bonus demerit points when your Royal Rumble return entrance gets f beyond repair because someone in the truck actually jumped the gun and hit Nia's music before the countdown. How I don't, does- I don't know. That's why I've been trying to figure out how do you fuck this up? Does that happen? Number five, Nia Jax, 2019 men's. Right, see- I disagree. I disagree. I give them this. I let this as a pass. I disagree. Our truth, if our truth would have made it down, I would have said I, I, I agree, and he would have been off on number 30. Naya, I'll give a pass to. You know that problem we had with Carmella earlier? We were set to have the same problem in the men's match with our truth scheduled to get the final spot, and then we all thought to ourselves, WWE has to have something planned, right? And well, Something sure would be the operative word there. Never in my life have I felt more like I have been having a fever dream while watching a Royal Rumble than when Nia Jax took out R-Truth and entered herself in the 2019 Men's Royal Rumble. Even as I watch back Nia getting pinballed around the ring by everyone hitting their finishers, I cannot fathom what the idea was here. Absolute befuddlement. Was it just to do the single most illogical thing possible? Cause I mean, a decision like this truly needs to be recognized by NASA or something. Number four, Nat I disagree. I don't think it's that bad. It's not that bad. I actually think that's a pretty good. That I like the Nia Jackson men's one. She didn't need to be number thirty, no, but I understand why you did it. Uh, fucking Italia, ain't it? Natalia, 2021, women's. I know I have blocked out a lot of pandemic wrestling, so I won't blame y'all if you have too, but I will be the asshole that reminds everyone of the time WWE announced something so stupid that it generated enough backlash from fans to get it changed, which is like hitting a bullet with a smaller bullet whilst wearing a blindfold riding a horse. The week of the Rumble, WWE announced that on backstage of all f***ing things, they would reveal who the number 30 entrant in the men's Rumble was going to be, and understandably, this caused as violent a protest as wrestling fans can wage online and WWE changed course because yeah hey kids let me just tell you all what you're getting for Christmas too like no what the f why so instead Edge and Randy Orton were revealed to be entering number one and two while Natalia and Tamina would wrestle a match for the number 30 spot in the women's rumble to which fans everywhere threw up their hands and said fine I guess whatever and we moved on and yep it was just Natalia Comes in, two minutes, comes out, exactly as they told us it would happen. 34 Royal Rumble events had taken place to this point, and WWE still f this up. Number three, Duke the Dumpster Drossy. 
1996. Third time's the charm with announcing the number 30 entrant ahead of time, or maybe I should say first time's the charm, because the first time WWE announced the number 30 entrant ahead of time was probably the most offensive. Maybe I should give more leniency to the older match, but in no timeline would promoted number 30 entrant and resident trash man jobber Duke the Dumpster Drossy have garnered any excitement. Not even in the universe where we are all trash men and Drossy is our king. It still would have been better kept a secret. So really, on your ninth try at doing a Royal Rumble, you should know better than to have a literal job guy win the most exciting spot in your most exciting match. At least Carmella and Natalia were former champions with some credibility. This was Duke the Dumpster Drossy, who beat Triple H. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with Duke the, Duke the Dumpster Drossy. There ain't nothing wrong to earn the number 30 spot and then got eliminated after a minute. How WWE didn't learn from this lesson is beyond me. After all, it's not as if the company has a tendency to f their fans or anything, right? Number two, Roman Reigns. This one pissed me off. This one pit. I still don't know why they have an obsession with doing this. They love doing this. They do it now if they could. They love Roman Reigns as number as in the final two and Roman Reigns as the last option. This one was because this one you had options. You had options. You went with Roman Reigns still. Some people bought in the comments, right? The reason they did this is so you didn't really get you, people cheered Randy Owen one because it's not Roman Reigns. Just don't have it be someone we dislike that you have to drag Roman out for his hate. You don't need to use Roman for his hate. Just have Roman Reigns, just have Randy Owen not win. It's fucking not hard, lads. 2017. Oh yeah, I remember the hype of the 2017 Royal Rumble match. So many potential winners with megastars like Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, and The Undertaker, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens looking like potential challengers for then-champ Kevin Owens, or maybe we'd finally see the main roster debut of Samoa Joe, who could go on and face John Cena or AJ Styles if he won. And then the match underdelivered because all of those megastars were left to enter at the very end, and the rest of the field was mostly folks like Apollo Crews and Mojo Rawley and Kalisto and James Ellsworth, but but we still had number 30. Even after a so-so rumble, everything would be saved with an epic number 30. But you know what? Sometimes the Samoan Joe you want isn't the Samoan Joe you get, because rather than Samosa Joseph himself, we did indeed get Roman Reigns, who had competed for the Universal Championship on that show at the height of the Roman Reigns hate. You just know Vince McMahon had the biggest f***ing smile on his face in Gorilla, while everyone in San Antonio realized they had once again paid to be f***ed with by an insane old man. No shade to Roman himself, of course, he was just doing his job here. But this is number two because it was WWE giving a middle finger to their fans, which they had totally never done before. And number one, Rey Mysterio, 24. I feel so bad for Rey. I know why he's number one. He has to be, but this is so bad. The poor guy. You the only time in the history of wrestling where people hated Rey Mysterio. The guy did nothing but Rey Mysterio. It's the nicest man. He's too nice. He won't tell fans to fuck off when they surround him and go to his house and do shit like that. I'd tell all the people who do that to me to fuck off. He's too nice. And he does. The, he, he, this night should never have happened. The man did not deserve to be hated this much. 14. Man, if you need an even better example of someone on this list through no fault of their own, here it is. Rey Mysterio is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, but it didn't matter who you were, what your name was, or why you were there, because to WWE fans in January of 2014, not a single other human on the planet would have been an acceptable number 30 entrant and winner in the 2014 Royal Rumble match than Daniel Bryan. How else would you know the Royal Rumble is just around the corner if we didn't talk about the 2014 Rumble? It's documented to hell and back, Bryan was kept out of the match, the fans in the building didn't know it, and they rained down hellfire and vengeance on poor Rey Mysterio, who was booed vociferously until his elimination, because this, more than any other number 30 entrant in Royal Rumble history, was an example of WWE being bound and determined to not give their fans what they wanted. And for that, it is the worst of all time. And that's our list. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know again what you think the worst number 30 entrant is in the Royal Rumble. 
in the comments. Hit the like button and subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.